What is going on, my friends? I am Michael Anthony, and thank you so much for checking out my article in this month's Shutter Magazine. This month, we were talking all about creating amazing black and white portraits. I hope you guys read the article because there's a lot of good information in there on how to shoot for black and white portraits. But once you are done getting the shot, getting everything that you guys want, you come back, you see some amazing images, how are you guys going to edit those and make them look good? So today, I am going to share my favorite technique for editing black and white photos in Photoshop shop for you guys. So before we get into this, I just want to let you guys know I followed the steps that I laid out in my article. I looked for good contrast, good lighting. I added a little bit of separation here and then uh, we got some great images. So this shoot, I was out there uh, in the desert with Jennifer and, uh, and we shot on an amazing motorcycle. So let's go ahead and get into Photoshop right now and we are going to edit these images and, uh, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I get my black and white conversion in less than 60 seconds. Here we go. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna try to do, guys, is I want to go ahead and pick my photo, right? So I ended up choosing this one right here, and uh, and I think this will make a really good uh, black and white conversion. So just to let you guys know how this image was shot, we had a key light, it was a mag box on this side, and then she is being backlit right here by the sun, okay? So we have the backlight coming from the sun, natural light, and then the front light right here, which is from our, uh, our strobe. But if you guys notice in the background right here, we have a lot of blue channel from the, uh, the sky, which is just casting shadow um, onto the rocks behind here. So uh, you can see some blue tones here, which will contrast nicely with their skin. I'm gonna show you guys how we would go about editing that. Where'd my image go? There it is right here. So this is the one that we're going to end up using right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this real quick. And, uh, and I already completed a pretty basic conversion on it real quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this real quick and show you guys how we went about doing this. So this is straight out of camera right here. It was shot with a Canon 5D Mark II. And I'm just gonna go ahead and raise my exposure just a tad. I'm gonna darken down my shadows just a little bit. I don't wanna lose shadow detail here. Um, but I'm going to make sure that that's still there and I'm bringing my shadows down a little bit. I'll bring my blacks down just a tad, bring my whites up a tad, so now I have nice contrast, okay? Now I think this looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up into Photoshop. When I open up into our Photoshop uh, desktop, this is what I have right here, right? So we can do black and white conversions a number of ways, and I like to use adjustment layers to do them because then I keep my raw file uh, intact. It's non-destructive editing even though Photoshop in general is destructive editing right here. So when we get in here, um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can utilize the straight black and white adjustment layer, which will turn it black and white. That's one way we can do it. Delete that layer here. We can also go to our hue saturation and we can drop our saturation down. That's another way of doing it right here. But one of the ways that I prefer to do this because I like to use just slight color toning in my black and white conversions, I like to use the gradient map. And when we click on gradient map right here, it has kind of a preset determined color mapping that it is going to use. And if you see over here, you have shadows and you have highlights and these are the colors that it's adding to those two things right here, right? Now, obviously, I'm not gonna do this. This is not like a comic book poster, right? So we're gonna convert this image to black and white. So when I go ahead and click this uh, bar right here, it brings up my foreground to background transition. And I've got right here a lot of different options. You can get crazy with it if you want, right? But that's not what we're trying to do today. Instead, what I wanna do is I want a black and white conversion. So I'm gonna click black to white, shadows are black, and my highlights are white. And what that does is it gives me just a clean black and white uh, base to play with, right? But we're not done here. This is super customizable. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of ways that we can do that. So right here, if I were to drag this in, it's gonna darken down my image, okay? If I were to drag in the highlights, it's gonna brighten up my whites, okay? Now, if I were to take this one right here and I were to go ahead and adjust this, this is going to go ahead and adjust my luminance levels and where that mid-tone transition from shadow to highlight is going to be positioned. So we can kind of play with this right here to get kind of the perfect balance. I made something that I wasn't supposed to. Hang on, delete that real quick. And let's go ahead and bring this back to black here. Uh, and then we can go ahead and just kind of play with where that transition is supposed to be. So I kind of like it maybe somewhere around, let me see, right about here, right? And then what I want to do here is I want to go ahead, oops, I want to go ahead and uh, maybe add a little bit of color to my highlight, right? Or to my shadows. Let's start with the shadow first. So if I click on my shadow right here, 
we do that, my color right here. And you can see all of the colors that are gonna be here, right? So all I gotta do is move this up just a little bit, and now you can see the color of this image start to change. Now, I typically stay with blue in the shadows, or I go with like a brown or an orange tone in the shadows, which I think looks better here because she's wearing that leather jacket. It kind of fits the mood of this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. I think that looks good. And then I'm gonna come over here onto my highlights right here and I'm gonna click that color and I'm gonna add just a little bit of color to my highlight. Now you can see when I slide this up to get my color chart here, I've got obviously saturated red. But in order to avoid that, all I'm gonna do is kind of pick the color that I want. Let's go with like this orange right here. And then I'm gonna drop this down to almost nothing, right? And then once I do that, now I get a really clean black and white conversion that just looks really good with the tonality on it that I wanna do. And just like uh, everything else in Photoshop, there are a million ways to do this. This is just the way that I do it. And obviously this conversion, this color conversion, would have happened after everything else in the image, like these stray hairs right here, dodging and burning, all of those things are completely finished. But I just wanted to show you real quick in this video how to do this color, this black and white tran, uh, conversion, but just make sure you're doing this at the end of the entire process, and that will give you a much better image. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. Quick tip in Photoshop to get amazing black and white photos and customize the color toning to your liking. If you guys like that, uh, like this tip, you like the article, please give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you're not already subscribing to Shutter Magazine, I suggest you do it because there are a million, not a million, but there's a lot of great, great photographers here dropping knowledge every single month. And, uh, and it's where I started learning photography and hopefully some of the, those of you guys who are newer to photography, hopefully you guys can look back on the content that's been created here and, uh, and pick up some amazing tips. Thank you guys so much uh, for checking out the article and this video and we will catch you next month in the next edition of Shutter Magazine.